Hadi from myflashlabs.com and this is the second episode of our course about how to implement an Adobe Air Native extension into your project. But this time, in this episode, we are going to show you how you can do this implementation in Flash Builder ID. I am going to use Flash Builder 4.6 for this video, but those of you who are using Flash Builder 4.7, uh, you can still follow up because uh, these two IDs, these two different versions are the steps to be taken are exactly the same uh, with a few differences which I will talk about them as soon as we get to them. So I have my mobile Adobe Air mob project here and I have already downloaded the uh, an ANE, it can be any kind of Adobe Air native extension. Uh, but we are going to do our test on the web view a &E. uh, So you can uh, download the zip file of the a &E here and we are going to first work on our project so let's open it in Flash Builder IDE. This is a very simple project and if we check out the document class uh, you will see that all this project is doing is creating a button and then place it at the center of the screen and as soon as the button is hit uh, it will trace a message to the console. Uh, let's run this project. Alright, here we have, we are running on a simulator and as soon as we hit the button it will trace it to the console. Uh, but before starting with implementing the a &E, uh, let's have a look at our project setup. Uh, first of all, we are using Adobe Air SDK 20. It's a general rule uh, that it's a very good idea that uh, you use the, always the latest Air SDK. And if you hit on the right click on the main project and see the properties you will see that uh, I have set the SWF version to 31. Uh, this version number goes with the SDK which is 20 uh, but if I put a wrong number here let's see what happens if we are running the project. You see the SWF is unloaded unexpectedly and there is actually no error messages and even if you check here it just said that it is terminated but there is no error message and this is one of the reasons that most of the uh, users are getting confused. Uh, the good thing about Flash Develop ID on the other hand is that it explicitly named the problem so you know that the problem is with the stabilized version but in Flash Builder as far as I can see, there is no error message, so you should be very careful about these versioning numbers. Alright, we set it to 31 again, and if you run the project, it will compile just fine. Yes. So, uh, let's get back to the zip file which we downloaded from my Flash Labs GitHub repository and extract it on the desktop. The first thing you would normally do is to look for the a &E file. So here we will find it under the FD, which is uh, the default demo project, which we will can include in all of our extensions. Uh, which is a flash develop demo project. So in the FD folder, you look into the lib folder and here's the AME. Let's copy this AME and go to our own project. Um, to keep everything clean, let's create a new folder and call it lib and paste the AME here. Here we go. Now let's get back to our 
project and as you can see there is a new folder added here but still we are going to need to add the ANE to the project so we go to the properties and under action script build path go to native extension tab and add the ANE so our ANE we put it here going to open uh, it's okay to add this checkbox but later after we uh, decided to change the error manifest file uh, you should be very careful about this auto completion things all right then is added here if you open it uh, it says that the minimum air runtime version required for this ANE is 15. Uh, but as we know, we are using Erstica uh, 20, so <clears throat> we are okay. Now, let's get back to our main class and import the classes required by the extension. Import. Um, and let's add the event for the extension to all right here's the event and let's create a new variable private var And let's initialize this variable as soon as we hit the button. Uh, we have some arguments. Uh, let, we can just copy these from the sample project we have. In, again, in the zip file that we downloaded, go to the FD and source folder and let's check the demo sample file uh, okay <clears throat> uh, we are going to initialize the file like this So, we just implemented the ANE into our project and as you see, uh, the auto completion is completed which means that our project is correctly knowing about the ANE library. So, let's hit the run again and as you see, there is a native extension error here. Let's see what is the reason of this, ex uh, this error message. Uh, Although we have added the ANE itself to the project, uh, the ANE files are not actually compiled into the project. So we should go back to the properties of our project and under the action script build packaging, uh, you should select Google Android. Uh, of course, uh, I'm not going to talk about the Apple iOS because the steps are exactly the same. So I'm just going to talk about the Google Android. Uh, hit this option and then go to native extension. And as you see, you should click here to include the extension into the packaging process. Okay. And now let's try to run again. Okay, our extension <coughs> is uh, correctly running. So we are expecting that as soon as we hit this button, uh, the extension will be initialized. Let's see what happens when we hit it. Oops, there are a lot of problems. Uh, the extension contents doesn't have a method with the name command. 
So, what could be the problem? E what you should consider about running native extensions is that most of the Adobe or native extensions are using native API calls which might not be available to the simulator. So, uh, what you should do is to consider running these extensions uh, on a real device, not a simulator. But before we do that, let's have a look at our manifest XML file. Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom of the manifest, you will see that the extension, the ANE file that we added, is automatically added to the bottom of this file. So, the extension, that was the reason that the extension was able to compile, but it was not able to run on the simulator. So we are going to use a real device, but even before that, let's compare the manifest of our project to the manifest file which comes with the demo zip file that we downloaded from the GitHub repository. Uh, let's open that manifest file from the demo project which is in FT folder application.xml Okay, uh, you see every extension uh, may have some different requirements in its Android or iOS uh, manifest setup. So, in our example, when using the rich web view ANE, uh, let's see what are the required details. Uh, the first thing to notice is that the minimum SDK version is 10. So we are going to copy this line and replace it in an appropriate place in our own manifest. Uh, let's look for the Android tag. And here it is. Uh, under the manifest tag, Android manifest edition under the manifest tag. So, uh, to make sure you are not making any mistakes, let's just remove the comments and add our own setup. Alright, and then the next thing is that the extension is saying that the ANE requires GPS access, so we are copying these two lines. And then we'll have and we will need an activity for our extension. So required for HTML file select file and so let's just copy the whole application tag and paste it here. Uh, now let's check out the iOS version. Uh, here we go. We need a minimum OS version of 6.1 for this extension. For GPS access to the extension, we need to copy these lines. So, we're gonna do that. Yeah. And of course, uh, you should copy this minimum line. Uh, everything else is the same and that's it uh, okay so what we just did was to use the demo project and check the requirements in the manifest file and we just copy the required uh, properties and tags or whatever to our own project. Now let's run our project on a real device. Uh, if you hit this little arrow button and then go to the bug configuration window, 
uh, as you can see uh, you have currently selected to run on a desktop which is actually the simulator uh, let me explain a little bit about the differences between flash builder 4.6 which is the current version we are using and flash builder 4.7 uh, which is the newer version with a little difference from the current version uh, all the steps that we had done up to here to implement an enemy into our project are exactly the same on both flash builder versions uh, but if you look at this a screenshot from flash builder 4.7 you will see that uh, there is an additional box here which is called app id uh, what is important about this input box is that when you are debugging your flash project on a real device uh, the id will inject an extra that debug text to the end of your application ID uh, although it might be okay to uh, keep this extra input from the ID but there are a lot of different extensions that require you to uh, use that specific application name so you should be very careful that maybe the Adobe R native extension which you are using requires you to make sure that this application ID is not being changed. Uh, one of these extensions which is uh, very important to make sure that the application name is not changed is our Facebook uh, SDK A&E. Um, so this is something to be considered. Uh, another uh, important point which I have to emphasize is that some R native extensions uh, re require you to uh, build and compile your project in captive mode and not in release mode. Uh, for example, uh, two of our extensions, the uh, GPS extension and the Facebook extension, if you scroll down to the bottom of our GitHub README page, uh, you will see that we have written make sure you are always compiling in captive mode, shared mode won't work, and the same thing goes for the GPS extension, which we have written on Android, you have to compile on debug or captive, shared compilation will fail. The reason is that uh, in, the extension has required us to uh, override some of the native parts on the extension written by Adobe so if you are compiling on a non-captive mode uh, those overriding uh, functions will not work correctly so uh, why am I emphasizing on this uh, because uh, when you are building your project in flash builder uh, when you are debugging your project, the uh, exported APK file uh, will be in captive mode. But if you uh, run a release mode, uh, it will be on a shared mode, not a captive mode, which will make the problem. And a lot of you had asked many questions about uh, why the extension is not working on release mode and it works only on the debug mode. Well, that's the reason. Anyway, so we are choosing this option on device and we are going to debug via network. Uh, it's okay, install the application via USB. Now make sure that your Android device is connected to your iMac and apply and debug. And here we go. Now I have the button at the center of the screen and if I hit the button uh, you will see that the extension is not working. Just fine.